Okay, welcome to One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Steve, and I'm here by myself today. But we're playing some V Sabotage, what we're going to do today. So excited for this one. Don't worry, Kim is going to be back tomorrow night when we play Marvel United, but we're taking a slight change of schedule that we normally do to play this game. And this will be nice, because I can show you how the solo mode works, because uh, this is new for V Sabotage. Uh, recently, the Ghost expansion that was on Kickstarter was delivered. And so I'll be showing you how that works and also showing you how the adventure works tonight. And But if you're joining us live, let me know if you have any questions. This is one of my favorite games. I love this game. It's so much fun with stealth. And normally I like to do a stealth build, but tonight I'm going to I'm gonna try to be not quite as stealthy as I normally do. <laughs> so I didn't go as stealthy as, as stealthy as I could do. Okay. Enough preamble, let's jump down to the table. So here we are with V Sabotage. Got it all set up. Got the board set up, and I am using the miniatures. So that's a bunch of there's another board over here. You might not recognize it. This is the miniature board. And uh, so the miniature board there, we have our player board here. This is new. So they have these nice little placards for your players, the character you're playing. So playing as a scout, I've got his ID card right here and all its equipment on it like normal. And then you have these XP slots. I have some cards already in there. Because now what you can do is when you complete objectives, someone can level up. And so that's what these two decks over here are for. There's a blue deck and a, a blue deck and a yellow deck. And we'll be drawing uh, one from each of them and picking which of the two we want to take when we get a chance to level up. And it shows a mission that has lots of objectives on it so that you can see how that works in detail. That's really, really fun. I am so happy to add that. It just adds a ton to this game. Not to mention, when you're playing solo, you have the ability to customize your strategy getting into the game. Some other things that are new, they did add red dice to the game. So the normal blue dice are 1 through 6 with uh, eyeballs on one on 1 and 2. The red dice are different. There's no one, a two with an eyeball, and then two sixes instead of the one. So these are much more powerful to hit. The good thing is, you roll these dice. The bad news is, sometimes the bad guy can roll the dice too. <laughs> so it's not always a great thing. But generally, you would roll the dice. It's really fun. I like it. So that's new to the game. Uh, leveling up is new. There's also something called luck tokens. I already have them in the bag now, but basically if you're playing with solo mode, you can throw these additional tokens in the bag. They're kind of like events and the luck events are very good for you. And so they will help offset that you're playing with only a single commando on a mission that is normally made for more. Uh, so that's one way they do it. Uh, the other way is you'll start with additional equipment, which I'll explain in a second, and you also start with additional experience, because normally you don't start with experience, but because I'm playing a mission geared for a higher player count, I get to start with this stuff. So, what does that mean exactly? Let's take a quick look at, at the mission itself. So, let me pull that down. So, here is what we're playing, the barracks. So, if we look at the screen here, over in the corner, right here, the four with the command next to it tells you how many, how many players or how many characters this map is designed for. So this level is designed for four commandos, but I'm only playing one. So there's a chart in the ghost book that tells you, well, if you're playing with only one commando and you're going against a four commando level, this is how you adjust the game or operation, whatever it is. So because of that, I'm going to start with six luck tokens so i have those in the bag i'll show you what they what happens when we draw them i start with two two uh, uh experience cards and then two equipment cards as well so let's go ahead and talk about that real quick so the luck tokens are already in the bag um let's go to uh oh, give me things give me things ah okay just put that away that's not good. So the other thing we start with is we start with uh, some experience. So there are cards specific for solo mode. They are the ones that say lone wolf mode only. So how these cards work is there are blue cards and yellow cards. The blue cards are ongoing effects, passive abilities, basically. The yellow ones are much more powerful 
but they're once per level effects. So the once you complete a level, uh, you'll get them back for the next next level, but it's once per level. And so the cool thing about this is uh, you have the choice to choose between uh, these four when you're starting solo. So one of them is uh, blue one. Immediately discard this card and replace it with one blue experience card of your choice. So you get through the, go through the whole deck, find any card you want, and play start the game with it, which is really cool. If you choose this one, of course it has the equivalent yellow one as well. So you can choose any yellow one. I did that already. I so chose this to be one of my two. So I discarded it, and I decided to choose uh, to get a little Lord of the Rings action going on. Fly, you fools! So this is what I'm playing with tonight. Once per level, replace a spotted token that just appeared with one flea token. Then remove the spotted token from the game and place the flea token in the equipment reserve. So that is also new. So in the game, in the loot bag, there are... Let me find one real quick. I can show you what they look like. There's the spotted tokens. And when you draw them, that means if there's any remaining enemies there, they saw you take down the comrade, and now you're visible. So if that happens, I can ignore that and instead play, and I have to show you the camera here, one of these flea tokens. These flea tokens means instead of them spotting me, they run away. <laughs> they saw the comrade fall down, and they skedaddle. Get out of here. So that's going to be really useful when I get a lucky draw in the loot bag. That's just that one. The other ones you can choose... Just to be, uh, um, is uh, the Army of Two. So this one, you can, at one point, pull another commando from out of the game to help complete a goal. So this is required for some operations, some levels that you need to, like, hey, be at this location, this location, simultaneously complete this objective. So that's how you how to get around it in solo mode. But I chose this as my second one. The start of each turn, get a plus one action point token. So I get to save my actions. But if I already have one play, I get an additional action point. So long story short, I'm going to have four actions during this game. Four actions in the Fly You Fools. Okay, so those are new. We talked about that. That We, talk, we have the miniatures. I'll explain how the board works as we go through it. And I think let's just talk, let's talk about the setup and, and get going. Okay. So... I am playing as the scout. I chose this side of the scout. There's two sides of him. You can choose which one you want. Chose this one. He has two actions, or two special abilities. For one AP, one action point, I can stealthily move to a medium tile. So in this game, normally when you go from moving to a medium sized tile, that is a tile that is size two, like this one here. This is a size two tile. If you move one action, they see you. It's kind of a bigger area. You have, you, if you don't take your time moving in there, they'll, they'll catch you. So you normally you can spend two actions entering medium tile to stay stealthy. But with a scout, I can do that with one action. Also, it says the other ability for two actions, stealthily move to a large tile. So that is up like right up here, this large tile. Normally, when you move into a large tile, you will be spotted. Hands down. It's too big of an area. There's no place to hide for cover. They, they see you. Scout is the only character, yeah, the only character in the game that can do that. You can move this to a large tile and not be spotted. So I've got those two abilities. And I also have a Thompson gun with two dice on it and a crowbar. It lets me open door stealthily. Also, because we're playing with this solo mode, I chose two equipment. I decided to grab, oops, let me tuck this away so you can see what I'm talking about, binoculars. This lets me re-roll a dice once per turn. That affects me. The last one I chose is a smoke grenade. I can lay this down and turn that tile into a small tile and any commands on it go into stealth immediately. Okay. I'm playing with the scout. We've got the barracks. Let's talk about the barracks real quick. So here's the level. We're just doing a single level. You can actually play this game with an operation, which is a bunch of levels combined together in like a mini campaign. And you can also play a campaign, which is a bunch of operations chained together. So you have a lot of options on if you can do a short, medium, or long game. I'm showing the short game tonight. Get those plans. Pick up three documents, zero action points on each of those triangles locations. Uh, that, those are these. Where's my mouse? Uh, there it is. These guys right here. So these are the, the objectives. If they have the X on it, that means I cannot use explosives on a tile because if I do, 
that objective will be destroyed and I lose the game. I fail the mission. So I have to be careful with explosions on those three spots. This one up here and this one down here as well. So those are the three objectives I have to get. Those are the documents. Um, so I have to pick those up for zero action points and leave the level. So pretty straightforward. This is one of the more straightforward missions, but I wanted to give this as an example of how the new stuff works. Okay. The rest of it shows it set up. Uh, there are open doors. If you see uh, this symbol here, this is open door. Uh, while this over here with the line through is a closed door. Uh, these trucks are spawn points. We do have the alarm up here. And then we have a machine gun nest here that we can use or the enemy will use. That's all the stuff on the board. Now let's talk. Uh, So the, in the miniature version, we do have these door tokens. And so they actually came with these standees, uh, sandy doors. And if they are parallel to the border like this, they are closed. If it's sideways, they're open. So I have these all open on the board here, except the ones that are actually closed, but that's how they work with a miniature version. They also added, um, this is really cool. Actually. I love this terrain here. Uh, this, this machine gun nest is so cool. So I added that mentor on the board as well. And then up here, we do have, oops, right over here at the corner, a little al alarm miniature. So here's the alarm siren. Okay. Here we go. Let's start the game. So to start the game, first thing we need to do is draw an event card. See what we start with. Oh, we start with a ghost event. How about that new one? Risky Endeavor. During this turn, once maximum, if one commando succeeds a stealth check on a tile with two or more enemies, add a luck token to the enemy reserve, even if you're not playing in the lone wolf mo mode. So this is cool because those luck tokens I talked about, sometimes you can get them independent of playing this special solo lone wolf mode. So um, that is if we sneak onto a tile with two or more enemies. Okay, cool. Uh, down here tells us the direction the enemies are moving. Unfortunately, we don't know where they're going. So during the enemy movement step, we'll have to draw to see where they go. And this here, this ghost tells you what expansion it's in. Okay, so set that there for now. Now we take a turn. So to start the turn, the first thing we're gonna do is due to our Vigor card is we're gonna get a free action point. So normally you have to save an action, but we just get it straight up at the start of our turn. Okay, then we have our three actions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have to enter the map through the trap door. So one action to enter through the trap door. Okay, so let's look at the board here. Where can we go? These doors are open. I need to get to that document somehow. Yeah, this door's closed and that door's closed, but the rest of these are open. Let's see if I can sneak over. Let's just try to get closer right now and we'll figure out where we need to go from there. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move once into this tile here so for one action you can move us move a space move into a tile so one action two actions moving to the medium tile now normally i would have to do this by spending two actions but my special ability lets me do it for only one so one two i've got one more action left but i do have to save action i could move up here into this tile here there's a slight risk though because we do have a spawn point right here and if the enemy spawn there and they choose to move west they will move into my spot and I'll have to do a stealth check. I think I'm okay with that. The The risky part is if I get spotted, there's a machine gun that's right there. <laughs> I can turn around and mow me down. So I don't want, no, don't want that to happen. I'll move up there. I do have my binoculars ready to go so I can reroll if I fail the stealth check. So let's, let's hope for the best. Let's do that. We'll play a little aggressive here. There we go. So one, two, three, just moving closer. And let's do the enemy step. So the enemy is going to first spawn. So we'll draw into this enemy bag. And for the miniatures, they actually have these different types of uh, tiles on their tokens. So we'll draw into this one. So this is a enemy with a single die. So how this works is the miniature will match the silhouette. So if I go over here, this guy here, and you can see actually underneath him as well. Let me zoom in over there. Oops, there he is. It's got a, a, there you go. The single die down there. 
So I pull them off, and you can actually see on. Maybe you can see. It's really hard to tell. Um, it's really hard to tell on camera. There's just, there is a square, a single square there as well, so you know that this is a single die enemy. So he is going to appear right here. And then anytime you grab a miniature off the board, you'll take the other token and you'll place it into this location here. This is going to keep track of how many of those are on the board. Anytime you remove a miniature, you'll take those tokens and put them back in the bag. So that's how the whole system works. So draw one here and you draw one here and draw one there. So let's draw for the next one. East. So, the, oh, we drew a luck token. Uh, so anytime you draw a luck token, you keep drawing. So I drew a double enemy there. And then finally, let's go up here and draw another double enemy. Okay. So let's go ahead and spawn these enemies first. This guy is going to be a two enemy two. Another enemy with two die here. Okay. Luck token. See what they do. Let's flip it over. Ah, so this is going to look weird because the green screen is. So apologize. But this one says I get to remove a spawn point if there are four or more. The other one below that is, I believe, just remove an enemy. Let me double check. Uh, if there are four more enemies on this, more four more enemy entrances entrances on this level. Permanently remove one of them. Otherwise, return to the reserve all enemies with a sludge hammer who are not protecting an objective. Ah, I see, there's a sludge hammer on it, including those on the table behind the enemy entrance. There are no sludge hammer enemies in this one, so unfortunately, this luck token does nothing. But hey, that's okay. So that was the first one, and they don't go back in the bag. They're once per level. When you go to new levels, you actually add them back to the bag. Okay, so we did that. Now enemy spawn, then they have to move, and then they will try shooting. So let's see which direction they're going to move. I draw the next card, and I only look at the bottom. So they are moving west. Oh, no! Oh, this guy's supposed to be here. Oh, no! So any guy guarding an objective, like this guy's on the triangle, he's not going to move. And same thing with him. So, But all they're going to try to move west if they can. The only one that can move west is this guy right here. So he's going to move into my spot, and I have to do stealth check. Okay. So stealth check is simple. You roll one die per enemy, and you don't want any eyeballs. If you roll eyeball, they spot me. So here we go. Stealth check. Come on. No eyeball. All right. We're good. We're good. He did not see me. Okay. Then they any enemies that see a target will shoot. Luckily, they don't see me. And that's basically it. So now we do the next turn. And unfortunately, I did not get a chance to add another luck token to the bag because I did not move into space with two enemies. New event. Special delivery. <clears throat> um, let's see. Yeah, we can do this one. Okay, a resistance fighter wants to talk to you. Should one commando accept for one action, roll two dice for each four, five, or six, pick up one token from the equipment discard pile. Well, there's no equipment that we've discarded, so there's nothing to do with this one. We'll just ignore this one. And the enemies are moving east if they don't see me. All right. So now it's our turn. And now the nice thing is I get four actions because I start the game with a, I start the turn with a plus one. So first thing I want to do is I don't want this guy on my tile. I'm going to eliminate him. I can do a stealthy attack. Don't roll the dice. I just take him out. So one action, take him out. And I take his token and add it back into the enemy bag. Okay. Now we get to draw a loot. See what he drops. We draw into an eyeball. So how this works is if there was another enemy in that same location, the same tile, the enemy would have saw me go up and take out his buddy. But luckily there's no one there, so this eyeball does nothing and gets discarded with no effect. So I get to keep my fly you fools for a little bit longer without having to spend it. Okay, so no loot, but the, hey, nothing bad happened there. I'm, I'm good to get rid of those. The next action we'll do, we do have a locked door here, but I have a crowbar. So my second action, I will open the door with a crowbar for two. If you don't have a crowbar, you can shoot the lock. And if it's a noisy weapon, you'll get you'll you'll be curious what's going on. So my second action, my third action, I will enter in here, and I need to take out the guard that's protecting it so I can steal that those documents. Okay, so let me do a stealth check. Here we go. Don't need an eyeball. No eyeballs. All right, no eyeballs. So they didn't see me. 
So you say one, two. My third action, I will take him out. Put that stealth check. This guy is a double, double dot guy. So put him back in. And I have one action left, four actions, but I do get to looking at the board here. Oops, not that one. I'm sorry, wrong one. At the board here, it takes two actions to, or sorry, zero actions to pick up a a document. So that's awesome. It's gonna be so I could just right now for zero for free, pick it up. So I'll get that into my inventory. And because I complete objective, we get to do some fun stuff. So we get to draw an experience card, a blue one and a yellow one. And we get to pick between these two. So we have the option of picking a chain shot. Ooh. Probably gonna take this one. I love this card. Every time you spend an action to shoot with a weapon with one die or two dies, you get a, and you get at least one hit, you can immediately perform another shot for free. So that's for quite awesome. That's a passive, so it's just always available. And once per level, smoke. All commandments on your tile, medium or small, become stealthy. That's a nice gale jail free card. I already have a smoke grenade. I'm definitely, definitely gonna take the chain shots as my other ability. Now, when you're playing this game multiplayer, at max you can have three experience cards. But when you're playing solo, you can actually have six. So we can actually get more experience as we keep playing. Okay, so that was my third action. I have one action left. They're gonna spawn and they're gonna move east. I think what, ooh. Trying to think here. So I could move up here. It's risky, really risky, because I could get spotted by walking in there, of course. And of course, the guy who spawns can see me as well. Or I can head back here and be safe for a turn, let the guy spawn, and then take, take him out later. Or I could just wait. Wait for guys. Maybe that's the best bet. The other thing I could do is I know another guy will spawn. They will move here, and then I can just try take him out that way and be visible for a little bit. I don't think it's worth it. I think, I think let's try to do, let's try to stay stealthy as long as we can. So what I will do, one more action. Do I take the chance? Do I take a chance? I do have a saved action. I have a get a free card to do. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'll do it. I'll chance it. Let's, let's play crazy here. Let's move up here into this tile. Um, I have to do a... No, 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 I'm, I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. I'm checking it out, guys. Checking it out. Because <laughs> I just realized I have to do two stealth checks, then I don't really want to do that. <laughs> Risk it right now. All right. That is it. Let's go ahead and do the enemy spawn. Okay. So we have one down here. Hey, Greg. Play to win. <laughs> Oh, you think I should do that? Well, play to win. It could be like take your chance or move push forward. If you want to push push forward, I will. I have to succeed at two stealth checks. Potentially, that could be, that could be bad, but fine. Okay, you talk me into it. I think you want to be aggressive. We'll we'll do it. Be aggressive. Here we go. Stealth check. Aggressive it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go, Greg. Greg. Greg says aggressive. Here we go. Roll the dice. Oh, yes, he did not see me. That's perfect. Okay, so I don't have any more actions. I do have a saved action. The nice thing about the saved action is I can use it any time, basically. As long as I'm not interrupting a spawn or a movement or an attack, um, I can go between those stages, but I can't interrupt that stage specifically. So yeah, I'm stealthy there. He doesn't know I'm there. Another guy will spawn. But if he doesn't see me, and I do have a reroll, we might be, might be okay. Here we go. Spawn the dudes. Spawn the dudes. We have... A single die down here, and the one coming to our spot is, oh gosh, the guy with uh, MP40, I believe, is the weapon. Well, that, that's what the two dice means. Ah, uh, this is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see this one in our spot. Oh, okay. So this means nothing spawns. <laughs> that's really nice. But when you get one of those, it is removed from the game. Instead, you add an elite unit token into the bag. So the longer you play, the more aggressive the game is going to get. And then, of course, we have to spawn these two guys. So, we'll spawn a single guy here and 
a double guy up here. Okay. He'll check to see if he can enter. He can. So he's going to enter. Okay. So now he enters. Now I have to do another stealth check here. So here we go. <laughs> Come on, Neil. Need to survive the stealth check. All right. No eyeballs. Okay. He didn't see me. We're, we're doing good. We're doing good. Okay. Now they want to move east according to this card. So this guy's not guarding anything. So he will move east into this spot. He's guarding the air, the alarm. He's not moving. And everyone else isn't going to move because there's no other forward east movement we can do. Awesome. It's our turn. Next round. Here we go. These guys are blind. <laughs> they are blind. They just, I don't know. He just, I'm hiding the ductwork or something. Actually, the other side of the scout, he does have an ability. He can actually pass through walls. He can actually go through the air ducts, which is really cool. I decided not to play that side this time, though. <laughs> Study lads. Uh, during this turn, each commando spending an action point becomes stealthier. They automatically, automatically succeed their stealth checks and ignore any spotted tokens. Um, what? That is amazing. So if I spend 1 AP right now, I automatically see my stealth checks. Yeah, let's do that. During this turn, each commander spending 1 AP becomes stealthier. Yeah, so I believe this, normally what happens when you draw these event cards, you have to do them immediately. I don't think this is 1 AP for each stealth check. I think it's 1 AP now, and then for the rest of the turn, you succeed the stealth checks. Pretty sure that's right. And they're moving north. So yeah, let's definitely do that. And I ignore spotted tokens. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. So let's go ahead. Yeah, we're we're golden right now. Let's just take out some guys. We're at it. So two actions. <laughs> take out these two guys with a stealth a stealth attack. Now normally I'd have to use one at a time. But it really doesn't matter because if I draw a spot, I will do one at a time to be be, be correct. So take out one guy, and that is a oh man, what was that level two guy? Yeah, level two guy. Yeah. So let's get some loot. I love the loot. Here we go. We're gonna draw into oh a better weapon, an MP40. I already have a Thompson Thompson gun that is honestly the same stats, so I'm just gonna leave it on the tile. Okay. And then the second guy, take him out as well. So those are two of my remaining three actions. Because remember, I use one action to become stealthy. I have one action left after this. Let's draw another loot. Let's see what we get. Draw on two. Ooh, this is a German uniform. I will absolutely take that. So a German uniform, you get to change your disguise. How that works with miniatures. They have a whole new miniature, this um, German mini, mini. And what that means is you can treat every tile as a small tile when moving. But you still have to do the stealth checks. So basically, with a German uniform, you can walk into the open area. And you look like one of them. So they it's fine. But the kicker is you have to still survive your stealth checks. Because thematically, you need to still speak German. And know the right right, uh, right uh, base operations or catchphrases. Or whatever they have to do. They might, might come talk to you. So you still have to pass it that way. So I'll hang on to that for now. And technically it drops into the location, but it's zero actions in the game to pick up and drop loot loot. So it's two actions. I have one action left. Oh, that door's locked. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. For one action, I will open the door with my crowbar. I have zero actions left. I am gonna spend my plus one. Because I don't really need it. Because I'm succeed the stealth check. So I'm gonna move it to here. I would normally have to do a stealth check, but I don't have to worry about that. Yeah, these guys are super blind, Michael. <laughs> these guys are like, oh, hello. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a, that was a really lucky event. I'm not going to lie. So now let's do enemy spawns. Yeah. Okay. Still haven't noticed we stole the documents. There we go. First one is a single die guy. Then we have... Ooh, a luck token. We'll, we'll resolve this at the end. Uh, double and remember whenever we draw those you have to draw again. It's like a like a, a bonus draw kind of and We get another double guy. Okay, so let's spawn the guys first. So here the two guy two here And looks like a one guy down here. Okay, let's see what this luck token is 
we get oh it's the same one rats there's no sledgehammers anywhere okay well that's okay i think the rest of them will get some good ones okay and then they will move north so he will move north into here normally i have to do stealth check but because i spent that steady lads i'm actually, I'm actually succeed stealth checks these two guys are moving up north to this location and this guy is also moving up here so <laughs> you know doing okay doing good you're doing good but uh this this madness is not nice <laughs> there's way too many guys near me way too many guys the interesting thing about this game is it doesn't take much to like if you screw up like the whole base will come down on you and gun you down you have to be really careful all right here we go Flare Bomb! At the end of the commando's phase, any commando on an outdoor tile not wearing a German uniform must perform a stealth check. Ooh. Launching flares in the air doesn't seem so easier. On any commando on an outdoor tile. So I stay outdoors. At the end of the, my turn, they might get to see, spot me. I might be okay risking that. I might be okay risking that. And they're moving east. Alright, so first things first. I get a free plus one, and then I can take my three actions. So, yeah, I'll take these out one at a time. So I got this guy, close combat action. Get some loot. We're going to draw into a grenade. I'm f I don't have any more space on my board to hold items. I do have a German uniform. It might make sense to put that on just to avoid that stealth check. So I'll put the grenade in the in that tile for now. We can pick it up later. Second action, let's take out this guy, the other guard. And draw into that loot. And we're going to get a crowbar. I already have a crowbar. I don't really worry about that one. I'll leave it there. And for your actions, let's pick up that objective. Okay, here we go. Oh, you know what I forgot to do, guys? I totally forgot. When you complete the first objective, I should have added a danger token into the bag. I apologize. I messed it up. So I need to add two danger tokens in the bag. These are these will help offset the abilities you get. So I'll put two of them in there. My apologies. I screwed that up. <laughs> so, all right. Here we go. I'm too excited to level up. This is so fun. There we go. We have choose fast and silent. Each turn, you may make one move on a small tile for zero. Or use a trapdoor to enter ed enter or exit on a small tile for zero. Each turn may make one move. So you get a free zero action move on a small tile. That's pretty cool. That's not bad. It's a passive. Here's the once per level. High precision. During this turn, every time you shoot, use red dice. Holy crap. I feel like that's awesome. Especially the chain shots. Because I could do red dice and then immediately shoot again. I feel like that's the one pick. Again, in a really bad situation, just start gunning. <laughs> so, I think that's what I want to pick. You guys, let me know on the chat if you think otherwise. But I want to. Go, I think leaning towards high position. Okay. So that is yep. So that is one, two. It's free to pick up. I have an action left. I will put on a German uniform. Let's discard this to the. Uh, discard. We'll put, make this our equipment discard. And then for zero actions, I'll pick up that grenade. Okay. So I will put our German officer into quest instead. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Yes. Spawn. Spawn, spawn, spawn. Still haven't spotted me. Didn't know what's going on. They are moving east. Is bad. I'm going to have one guy walk in my spot. But I'm wearing a German uniform. Maybe he won't recognize me. Oh yeah, normally right now I would have to do the, the stealth check. I don't have to worry about them right now. Okay, here we go. First card is, or first one is a no spawn. Followed by a two dot guy. Followed by a another two dice guy. Okay. So this will get removed from the game. We'll put a, an elite token into the bag instead. And we'll get a two dot here and another two dot over here. Okay. Wait, I think it's in the back. It goes right here. Okay, so that is it. Now they're going to move. They're going to move east. 
So it looks like we have this guy moving east and these two guys moving east. Okay. We have one guy moving into our spot. We have to do a stealth check. Here we go. We're getting lucky in the stealth checks. No eyeballs. No eyeballs. They are totally blind to our move movements. Okay, that is it. They don't see me. You can shoot at me next turn. Here we go. Out of ammo. Prisoners manufacturing enemy ammunition sabotage them. During this turn, every enemy unit shoots with one less die, but never less than one. <laughs> yeah, load of dice. Shh, that's my secret, Michael. <laughs> that's what's no. Yeah, uh, my luck won't, won't last for long, I don't think. So one less die, and then moving north. Okay. So a little bit of an interesting predicament. Um, so if we look at the board, let me move up here to the corner. Here we go. Look at the board state. So it's kind of hard to tell on the screen, but each of these tiles does have circles on it. It tells you how many people can be in that space. So the small tiles always have four, um, with the exception if there's a machine gun nest, the machine gun takes up turns two spices into one. So this tile right here is full. I cannot, no one can enter enemies or commandos until an enemy leaves that spot. So if I look at the map here, there's no way to get to this large tile without going through that spot. I have all the doors are open so that I can just walk around freely without worrying about that, but I have to take them out. So if I use my weapon, my weapon, if I pull that up on the screen real quick, let's do that real quick so we can take a some gander. If you look at the weapon I have, it does have the eyeball symbol with the um, speaker with the exclamation point. That means not only will I become visible if I use that weapon, but the alarm will be sounding. So that that is an issue if I had to choose to use it. But here's the, here's the thing I'm thinking about right now. The alarm is right here. I could potentially move here. I could maybe gun them down and maybe some other people as well. And then I can turn off the alarm. You can turn off the alarm once per game. And then we won't have to worry about the additional spawn. I think that's a plan. Clear this out and then make our way into here. And then we're gonna have to do the hard part. The hard part is trying to make it back out. We're gonna have to, it's gonna have to be a sprint. Yeah. We do have four actions, so. Okay. Oh, we do have grenades. We could do, we could throw, ooh, we could throw the grenade. They won't see us. That's the other thing we could do. We could throw the grenade. If you look at the grenade, it has no eyeball, but it has the exclamation point with the speaker. That means the alarm will sound because the, the grenade exploded, but they don't see where it came from. Sounds legit. Grenade into the tile. Okay, we'll do it. Grenade into the tile, we will. Okay. So let's go ahead and hey Powell Family Farm, welcome. Been wanting to see this game. Cool. Well, I'm glad you're here. If you have any questions, let me know. I, I didn't go over all the rules earlier because I have a lot of playthroughs of this one, but um, I'll explain a little bit as we go. Uh, basically, almost everything in the game is one action for the most part. The zero actions are detonating TNT and picking and dropping um, um, equipment. Uh, the other thing is you can spend the plus one token at any time. Uh, so that is really useful because you can you can do uh, basically like over overwatch. Basically, if a guy's going to enter your spot before they do so, you can gun him down before he does. And you can do some really cool coordination that way. All right. So I think what I'm going to do, let's try the grenade strategy. I'm debating if I want to make play no let's not bother i'm just gonna move over here love this game just not sure i can give up running with multiple commandos for this mode <laughs> yeah i want to show the lone wolf mode i think it's cool i think it, it's fun to play but it, to your point it's not difficult to run multiple commandos it really isn't uh i think i will play that most of the time honestly do um I, I think the one thing I like about Lone Wolf is the fact that you get to build a character before the game starts, and you have some really fun strategies that way. That's fun. I really like that part of it. But hey, it's another option, so either way works. Okay, moving to here. I'm in my German uniform. There's one guy there. I do have to do a stealth check. I've been lucky so far. Let's see if I'm still lucky. <laughs> here we go. Oh, yes, no eyeballs. Okay, we're getting really lucky. 
really. So, that was my first action. I have three more. Let's go ahead and take him out. The close combat, that is a double, double one. Okay. And see what loot we get there. Do, 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 do. Let's see, we get a uh, crowbar, which I already have a crowbar. I'm just going to leave that there. Okay, crowbars, the other thing you can do with them, they're pretty cool. If you're next to a spawn point like this, um, you can actually put it on the spawn point, like like so. What that means is you kind of lock the doors. Enemies will not be able to enter that tile until they break it down. They need four enemies to do so, or four strength enemies. Sledgehammers count for two. And then they'll enter. So uh, there's, if you haven't been noticing, um, I've been trying to do it, but basically whenever I spawn guys, I always put them on the outside of the tile as a reminder. Then I check to see if there's space for them to enter. Because they will build up on the outside and they will come swarming in once, the, once there is room. That's one thing you can do with these guys, these crowbars. Very, very useful. Okay, so I took him out. We have the alarm there. That was two actions. I have two left. Let's go ahead and, since we talked about it, Let's throw that grenade. <laughs> yeah, jam the door with a crowbar. Exactly, exactly. Okay, here we go. We're gonna throw the grenade. We're gonna throw the grenade right here, of course. So how that works is down here, it says how many dice you roll. We're gonna roll four dice, four dice. And technically this does count as a shot. Um, let's see. Yeah, so for example, there's some reminder text, for example, um, like here. Um, the shot action includes throwing grenades. So the nice thing is the chain shot. Oh wait, it's not a weapon with two dice, so this doesn't work. My chain shot doesn't work. I, I thought it would, because it actually says two, two specifically. So my chain shot is not going to work, but that's okay. I'm going to roll four dice targeting this tile, and I need four plus to hit these guys, and a five plus to hit the guy in in the um, in the nest. And alarms will go off. So let's see where we get. Grab some dice. Come on, at least one five plus. Need one five plus. Oh, look at that! Look at that. Three fives. That'll do it. So we come back up here. Take out one, two, three. All those guys are gone with that well placed grenade. And just for kicks, let's go ahead and do the grenade sound. <laughs> yep, they're gone. But now the alarm is going off. So kind of mark that with miniatures. We put this target next to it and we would flip all these spawns to the other side. So if you notice now there's, I'll lose him into a, one that's real close, a single person on the other side's got two people. So now they're gonna spawn twice as many people um, each, each round. So that's the downside to it. But totally worth it. We cleared that out. The alarm's going off. Let's see, it was one, to throw the grenade for three. I'm not visible, but alarm's going off. And for four, yes. <laughs> they gone, <laughs> they gone. Yeah. yeah, for four, I'm going ahead and turn off the alarm. So when you, it's one action turn off alarm and how, what it means is you actually remove the alarm completely from the map. Basically they think it's a false alarm, but they only fall for that trick once. So these will flip back over. The next time the alarm goes off, we won't be able to turn it off, turn it off anymore. So, but I think that was worth it. Throw a grenade, take them all out. My buddies are gone. They don't know any better. It's fine. Oh, by the way, we also get loot in that location. So we get to draw three loot there. I was tempted to move into the machine gun nest as well, because I can go pop in there. But I think turning off the alarm is more important than moving into the machine gun nest right now. Okay. So we draw three tokens. We get... Oh, medicine? That's great. Let me zoom in a little bit. We have another crowbar. Wow, all the crowbars, apparently. And this is a bombardment token. Uh, you get to choose any tile and roll that many dice as b calling airstrike to basically come down and bomb that location. And that can only be used in outdoor tiles, of course. Okay, that is it. Four actions. That's it. Yep. So now we get to do spawn. Here we go. Yeah, fault alarm, but a grenade went off. Nothing to see here. A bunch of people, you know, friends not watching the post anymore. It's fine. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> this game's just fun. It's so, so, so fun. We get, um, ooh, a danger token. So that's a bonus token. We keep drawing. 
uh, no spawn. That is really great. That is great because there will be less people here when we try to enter that location. Um, well, blue here. That's a single guy. And then another single guy here. Okay. So we'll do the endangered token at the end. Remove this. No spawn. Put an elite back in the bag. And we get a single guy here. He can enter. This one comes out. And another one comes into here. Now there's room. He is going to enter that tile. Okay. Let's resolve this danger token. What is this one? Oh, I remember this one. This one is not nice. But it's okay for what we have here. Each commander rolls a die for each of their enemy weapons. So if I would have picked up this MP40, I would roll a die for it. If I roll a 1, the weapon doesn't work. It goes it gets discarded. It gets jammed, basically. The nice thing is, I didn't pick up any enemy weapons, so this has no effect. So, <laughs> good news is, the luck tokens had no effect. Bad news, or no, good news is, the danger tokens had no effect. But bad news is, the luck tokens also had no effect. So, so far, <laughs> not being too impactful with those in this game. All right, then they're moving north. So, let's see, this is all full. So, we can choose which three guys move up there. This guy can't move up there, he's full. This guy would also join north, and no one's going to move. Cool, that's it. Here we go. Eastern Front. Germans failing to spot that the commandos are transferred to Eastern Front. At the end of the turn, if all commandos are stealthy, place up to three regular enemy units not protecting a triangle token in the reserve. <laughs> so if we stay stealthy, we get to send three of these guys back to the back out of the game? That's awesome. Because they're failing the job. Okay, cool. I, we, can, we can try to make that work. Let's try to make that work. And moving north again. Okay, so I've got my four actions, because I did start with a plus one. Still my German uniform, so one. Let's go ahead and pick up the medicine bag, just in case. That's free to pick up. Uh, one. Two. Let's go ahead and move into the large tile. Now, because I'm in the German uniform, this large tile counts as a small tile for me, for movement. So even if I wasn't have my special abilities, I could I can move in there without without worrying. But I do have to do a stealth check. Do have to do a stealth check? Here we go. Stealth check it is. Wow, we are doing awesome. Our stealth checks haven't failed a single one so far. That's amazing. Two, uh, three. Let's obviously take out this guy with a close combat. Uh, put this back in the bag, and then of course zero actions picked up the last objective. So before I forget, danger token in the bag, and we get to level up for the final time. Yes, final time. Here we go. Let's see what we get to choose from. We get to choose disappearance. When you per level, if you're visible on a small tile with one or two enemies for zero, oh, eliminate them for zero and become stealth again. That is amazing. That's an awesome one. All these yellow abilities are really powerful. The blue one, high pain threshold. When you're injured, not in critical condition, ignore one minus a minus one AP token. So you can ignore a wound. Um, I like the disappearance. Let's keep the disappearance. Okay. Now all we have to do is get out. So we what do we do is one, two. Three, I've got one action left for four. <laughs> okay, with Michael. Totally blind. Shh, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, we got this game. Um, yeah. I think... I'm trying to think if it makes sense to... I don't think it makes any difference if I crowbar this location. Because they won't be able to catch up with me. I can, I can run before they can get me. Yeah, I think we got it. So I will move here. Oh, we'll move the machine gun nest, actually. Move the machine gun nest. That's my last action. So now, Eastern Front, what's it say here? The end of the turn, if all commanders are stealthy, at the end of the turn, the turn isn't until the end of everything, I believe. I believe that's what it is. Let me double check what a turn technically stands for. Yes, game turn is the whole thing. That's correct. That's correct. So we have to finish out the spawn movement, and then they were still stealthy. That will happen. Okay, here we go. 
So spawn is... Wow, we're doing really great. I thought we'd be not stealthy in this game at all, but apparently we're maintaining it. Oh, there's a sledgehammer guy. And no elites either. Oh, okay, so double dice guy here, a sledgehammer guy right here, and then finally a single die guy right here. Okay, then they're all going to move north. This guy can move north. There's one spot open, and that's it. Now at the end of the turn, Eastern Front kicks in. High Command's upset because apparently the documents are missing. They finally realize, <laughs> not the most the comrades are gone because of the uh, grenade. We get to remove three regular enemy units, not protecting anything. Well, no one's protecting anything. And then we get to return them. To, yeah, remove three en enemy units. So let's get rid of this guy and two of these guys. Yeah, so these are two ones and a two. And I gotta put the tokens back in the bag. Okay. Yeah, we got it. I think we got it. This is the win. Back to Berlin. German officers have no room for error. Well, apparently they already erred. <laughs> During this turn, if two of these tokens, a TNT charge, grenade, on bombardment, blow up, apparently remove two special unit tokens from the enemy reserve. Wow. So you get less spawn, less elite spawning, which is pretty cool. But we'd have to use those tokens right now. Um, but that's not going to matter because we now have four actions. Right here, I can go one, two, three, four, and I got plus one for five. There we go. <laughs> so that was really, that went really well in our favor. <laughs> really well in our favor. <laughs> Yep, walked in, stole the documents, they got mad, send some people back back to Germany, and that's it. That's the game. So yes, that was a single level. Um, what we would do, we would actually keep our state. Yeah, luckiest run ever. I yeah, I, I agree. I got super lucky on that with the event cards and the 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 stealth checks. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we would keep all of our experience for the next level. We're playing a chain of them. We'll keep our equipment, our current state, and everything. So that's kind of cool. If you do draw, if you have six, or you have the max experience, you do get to replace existing ones if you want. Um, so yeah, we didn't unfortunately didn't see the fleet tokens or too many of the danger tokens. Um, I think I forgot to add. No, I added it in there. Yeah, that's right. But yes, that was the V Sabotage. So this was a single operation. Um, I want to show off how the miniatures work in this one. Personally, I like playing without the miniatures. I think the game um, runs great without it. I think the miniatures are nicely done. I love, love the terrain miniatures. Like this here, the machine gun nuts is really cool. Um, let me put that close here, close to the camera. You can see that. Um, really awesome on how that comes together. Um, I would love to see more of the terrain, to be honest. I don't quite care for the miniatures themselves because if i would get spotted i'll put a ring on my base um as opposed to just take my token flipping over it's just easier to to use the tokens in my opinion but yes that was a particularly lucky run and it was a lot of fun i love this game i will be playing this again in the near future i'm not sure it'll be next week or what um it might be next week i might try to sneak it in there but yeah, hopefully this showed you a little bit of how Ghost works. And if you have any questions on want to see um, more of this or any specific missions or different modes of play, let me know. I will definitely put this on there. You don't have to twist my arm to play this one. Um, I absolutely love it. Cool. Okay. Let's talk real briefly about what's coming up on the channel. Uh, this week, we do have our Marvel United uh, crossover campaign happening tomorrow night. So with Kim and I. Um, yeah, it's more fiddly with the mentors, exactly, Michael. You're welcome for the playthrough. It is a fun game. I love this game. I highly recommend it. Uh, I've got a lot of other playthroughs on there. If you want to take a look at those, I'll be putting more up in the near future. Uh, but yeah, Marvel United can't cross over campaign happening tomorrow night, and then Friday night's gonna be Marvel Champions. Then we have a co op chat talking about YouTube comments. We're gonna be doing a live chat talking about, um, when folks uh, respond to rules corrections on YouTube comments. I know Jason on One Stop Co-op Shop and Shelf Stories talked about this on his Shelf Stories YouTube channel. 
And I kind of want to talk about that as well. I think it's a fun topic to discuss. So we'll talk about that Saturday morning. And then I think I want to do a bonus stream later this week, this weekend. I haven't put it on there, but yeah. Looks fun. First time seeing this. That's, yes, is a really great one. Oh, the other thing I'll mention real quick is his first time seeing this. Setup for this game is the best. It is literally all these all the tiles in the game are outdoor or indoor. Uh, and there's three sizes, small, medium, large. And technically, the art doesn't matter. You literally can just grab the right size tile, flip the right side, and that's it. And it's so fast to set up. So easy to set up. And it made it so that when you play multiple of these... Oh, I forgot to show something. Oh, I got to show this. The other thing that's really cool is when you defeat a or complete a, a, a mission, you flip the card over and it's got some cool art. So this is like thematically what we were doing. And that is the scout sneak up behind the the officer, take him out. That is very accurate to what happened in the game. <laughs> so, but like the setup of the game is amazing. It's so well done. I love it. I kind of drives me nuts when I'm playing a big dungeon crawl and I have to find tile two A. This one just runs smooth. It's a very smooth experience, and it's fun. It's silly, like this. Like how would they not see me in this whole game? But it's fun. I love it. Cool. I can talk about this game a lot more. I love it. Uh, and I think that's going to end it for tonight. So thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you the next up. Oh my gosh. Bye bye. Oh, sorry. Coming back on real quick. Just a teaser. <laughs> I did see, uh, Michael, you just had the question. Have you played the Assassin's Creed version of this? I have. I have a full playthrough of the entire campaign on our channel. Um, so if you want to see that, you can watch it. It does. It's all spoilers, though. So if you don't see any spoilers, um, the Assassin's Creed one has a lot of similarities to this one. I do have a comparison video where I compare V Sabotage and Assassin's Creed. Uh, if you want to see how that works, there is a spoiler under a spoiler version and a non-spoiler version of it. Um, it they're both great. I do recommend both of them. I like V Sabotage better, mostly because I. Most because I like the different strategy. I have, feel like I have more control in the game despite the rolling of luck on the stealth checks. Um, but the leveling up your character in Assassin's Creed is amazing. The story is fun. I like it a lot. But yes, you can check that one out. Sorry. Now, thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you in the next stop. Bye-bye. <laughs>